Hello, my friends, and welcome to another edition of Whining with the Ryback. I am the big guy, Ryback. Ah. Ah. And I'm sitting here, guys, just relaxing, and it's actually a nice Friday evening. I'm winding down. Had a glass of wine before I got, got, got going here, and uh, my buddy... Seamus is on TV. And just before that, I Bailey was on TV. <laughs> the sweet ass of Bailey. Always comes the big guy. Lovely woman. Lovely woman. Not digging the Ellen DeGeneres haircut, but lovely woman. But she's a bad guy now. I get it. God, do I hate that haircut. I fucking hate it. Today, guys, if you're, not, if you're a first-time viewer, subscriber, here, I'm whining with the Ryback. I read negative comments of people whining. W-H-I-N-I-N-G, whining. Um, but the show is titled Whining, W-I-N-I-N-G, Whining with the Ryback, because I have some drinks. I have a little bit of red wine. Red blend is my preferred uh, drink of choice for red wine, for wine. And tonight I went with a Cupcake Vineyards uh, Red Velvet. It's a red blend. Um, I swung down to the liquor store and uh, went ahead and uh, picked up a couple bottles of it. And I've uh, been training really hard and... Uh, so I'm not going crazy. This ain't a Four Locos night or anything like that. It's have a little red wine, wind down, and uh, read some negative comments and hopefully can keep myself composed. And uh, the more wine that I drink, the less composed I probably will be. <laughs> and, you know, we have a little bit of fun here. A little bit of fun. We, we monetize the haters, guys, essentially. And at the end of the day, I, I don't... I could read the worst comments. I've seen the worst things in the world. And I go to bed with a smile on my face. A sleep apnea machine on my face and a smile under the sleep apnea mask like that. <clears throat> that was me gasping for even though I don't do that. I don't have that kind of sleep apnea. Not that severe anyways. But anyways, I'm, uh, I'm going to pull up some comments here. We had some real mean ones today. Am I on the wrong account? I, have, yeah, I am. Son of a bitch. I hope I can... Get it to the cor correct account. Ah, oh, shit. Maybe I can't. Big dumb wrestler trying to figure this out. Eventually. Whew. I got it. I did it. I did it. I fucking did it. So, apparently, I had everything. I had all my accounts just so you guys understand what's going on. Dells, maybe we could tighten that up a little bit. Like, fast forward of me struggling, and you can maybe put that I'm struggling. I don't know. But it, uh, it logged me out of all my accounts, and then it was giving me difficulty getting back on. But I'm back. I'm back. The big guy's back, bitches. <laughs> ah. Okay, there's my hi. Hi, how are you? It's me. Um, I do want to say, guys, before I dive into these comments, that, uh, look, I got, uh, I got a phone call today. From uh, a guy I've, I've done his show before, and uh, I sent him a message. I don't know if it was like eight months or a year ago, asking him if he wanted to do the podcast conversation with the big guy Ryback, available on all podcast platforms. Check it out; it's a uh, it, it's a badass show. And uh, I got a message that uh, Ryan Austin, call me, and uh, it was a California number, and so I figured. Austin is Stone Cold Steve Austin going by The Voice. And I was out running errands, actually shipping a bunch of shit off to Amazon and went through the, the truck wash real quick, the car wash for my truck. And I didn't call him before that because it's car wash is loud as fuck. And I, I've been on the phone before and there I can't hear. So I call him back and 
I get fucking, hey kid, how's it going? Hey Steve, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> He's a good guy. And then we talked for a bit and uh, he asked me if I wanted to do the podcast and I said, yeah. So, do a show. That's going to be coming out sometime, sometime soon, I'm sure. And whatnot. It'll be good to talk to him again. I had a good time talking to him back. I don't know if it's been shit four years ago. Maybe five. Ooh. Not five. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, under four. Maybe about four years. Because I talked to him whenever the IC title. Four, four and a half years. Or close to five. So, that'll be a good conversation. He's, uh, I've always got along well with him. And we'll see how that goes. But, uh, all right, let's dive into this. This is already getting long. I don't want to go overly long on this shit. I know you guys try to keep this shit like 20 minutes. It'll probably be like 74 minutes, whatnot. Uh, this is in, we got a little bit of hate with the Vince Russo stuff. Most of the stuff is positive, guys, and I love, it, it, it's all in good fun. And even the negative's not, it's not hurt people try to hurt people. It doesn't even, like, I see it and I already know. And I'm just like, it, it, it never, it never is a bad thing. I just like to monetize it, and it's funny to me because that's a way to kind of get back at it. But um, Sarah Harris Harla uh, writes, I thought that, and this has to do with the Vince Russo episode, are the, where are the real wrestlers? And again, guys, I don't make the titles for like, I have a YouTube editor, DJ, uh, Sneaker Addict, DJ Dells, and... Uh, so I don't make like the titles and stuff of this stuff, guys. I just put out the content and, and whatnot. But I thought that mindset had passed. Why should a wrestler's look supersede their talent? Uh, I'd rather see a small guy who knows how to work over a big guy who's clumsy. The realism doesn't matter. Uh, this is professional wrestling. If I wanted realism, I'd watch MMA. Well, buddy, uh, professional wrestling in the entire industry was built around uh, the the illusion of a real fight. Just so you understand that, um, I'm gonna and I'm gonna just keep calm when I go through this. Uh, why should a, a wrestler's look supersede their talent? Uh, I'd rather see a small guy who knows how to work over a big guy who is clumsy. Um, I wish you would provide examples because the majority of small guys that I see on TV don't know how to work and by work i mean portray the uh, illusion of a real fight uh and i talked about this on the podcast this week I, i'm all for flips i think flips are great in the right point at the right time um and the right flip uh i'm going to give you an example of a, a stupid move that doesn't psychology wise that does not make any sense if a guy is lying on the mat in the ring guys and you have the ability to jump and splash his body with your weight. I will just do a regular splash because I could jump up in my weight and throw my weight down in a very aggressive physical manner. And psychology-wise, that will pr bring the most force down on his body. So when a guy wants to show all the people around the world that he could do a backflip because he's insecure as fuck and thinks that doing a backflip is somehow uh, uh, a, a skill uh, uh, as far as fighting goes. When guys do the standing backflip in the ring, and I'm just going to break this down. I'm a big dumb meathead, right, guys? Here's why that move is fucking stupid. Why wouldn't you not just jump up and come down at a guy? Even a front flip, the momentum is going forward. You're increasing the speed and the force of which you are crashing down on an opponent's body. Why the fuck would you dumb fucks do a backflip and try to land on a guy when all the weight is coming down on your thighs, your knees, and your legs? The, the, the weight is going away from the guy. The force is being slowed down. So psychology-wise, you just show me that you don't know fuck about professional wrestling. That's my take on it. Oh, it's, it's, you can sit there and say, let's, let's break this further down, guys. The realism doesn't matter. And that is why the ratings are lower than ever. Just so you understand that. If you, let me ask you this, pal, Sir Harass. If you go to a movie and that movie just reminds you that you're watching a movie the entire time and it's fake, you're not going to think that's a good movie. The best movies suspend your belief 
throughout the duration of the movies. You don't have boomsticks being dropped in. You don't have them saying, cut. They don't put that shit in because they don't want you to see that stuff to keep your belief the entire time. So why do you think that's fucking okay for pro wrestling? This is why we cannot cater to the portion of people that are mentally fucking stupid. If I wanted realism, I'd watch MMA. Absolutely. And in wrestling is supposed to be the illusion of, 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 of a real fight with, with characters and development and, and fucking and acting. That's pro wrestling. You're watching fighting. Where in any other fucking sport do you see guys that put like fucking ballerina acts in front of the actual physical fight, the skill of fighting? And by the way, watch the talent. And this isn't on some of these things, how they do the little things and how they throw punches and how, and how fake it looks. That is not fucking, because they, they put learning flips over everything else. I hope I can come back and just wrestle occasionally and just completely just piss off that portion of you. And then you, when your little fucking flippity doodah fuckers can't do shit in the ring because you shut that shit down. Nah, -uh, you work to the big guy style. I don't work your style. You work to my style. Fuck. Man, like the people like that are the people that aren't good at real life shit. That's the fucking problem. Ah, I got a little hot at that one, guys. Sorry. A lot of wrestling stuff like that with fans sometimes. Uh, Ryback on AEW Women's Division. I think I said something negative about uh, Dave Meltzer, who's done nothing but put out lies about me and works with WWE and has fueled... Um, that whole thing against me very early on. So I don't, I don't, I think the guy's poison. I think there's nothing good about him. I think the sooner that he passes away, wrestling will be better. And unfortunately he's bred a whole new breed of like, there's a whole new group of people that like grew up, like thinking Dave was like fucking, and like not to say that Dave doesn't like, Dave does his homework on things and, and gets numbers and things like that. But the problem with Dave is Dave uh, takes uh, his fucked up opinion and tries to put it as fact to other people, but he also gets worked by the fucking producers in WWE and other people and who, who use him and put out, want to put out certain things. And he is a messenger for them. And he's, he's truly like, I'm telling you guys, the guy's not good. The guy is poisoned to professional wrestling. So I, I can't say like, it's like if somebody, you know, they, 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 maybe they're better people than me. If somebody murders your family and you got to forgive them and you got to, they were hurt, whatnot, they still murdered your family. But like, you're not going to like be buddy, buddy with that person. Like Melters fucking put out so much negative shit on me from day one. That's just false and made believe. Like I would love to come face to face with that. I would love to have an interview with that guy. I'd love to talk to him. I would put him in his place fucking the entire time. Uh, let's see. Truth bombs, right? I think this was in relation to another wrestling thing. He hate it with uh, when dudes with weak chins and shitty lower jaw development start taking steroids and think they're hot shit. Uh, you still pull less pussy than naturally handsome guys who weigh 165 pounds. That is the sad truth. Sacrifice your health all you want. So this is a person that is extremely hurt. They have probably a really small dick. And I mean, first of all, I, I think I have outstanding jaw development. Um, I think I'm looking younger uh, by the day doing on my plant-based diet. I'm very health conscious. I don't uh, do steroids. I don't do drugs. Um, I'm on TRT. I've been on TRT since I was 28. So, um, and I don't want to like, you know, toot my own horn on the whole pussy thing, but I'm kind of looking for love at this point in my life. But I mean, I've done extremely well, I think in that department, my, my entire life, uh, since, since being an adult, since I decided to, um, to, uh, you know, start, you know, engaging in that activity. And, um, I mean, this guy's hurt. I talked with Kevin Nash about this and we're like, we, we, I love Kevin Nash. Fuck. We think the people that are the root, the guys that are like the meanest are the guys with those tiniest dicks. Cause like, if you have a big dick, like you're happy, you know, but if you don't like, that's when like all this shit gets, you know, make excuses, you get angry. And 
God forbid you have a big dick and you have a muscular body and good looking man. I mean, why the fuck would anyone like you, right? Not to say that, you know, I'm just, I'm okay. But this guy, Cringe, or the truth bombs, the truth of the situation is, is he's probably, probably not doing too well. And not to say, you guys, you guys, you guys you can have a small dick and do great things in life. There's many people that have proven that theory correct. You just got to learn to fucking get over it right here, you know? Walk around like you got a fucking 15 inch monster between your legs. You got a fucking doll right here, guys. Ah, truth bombs. You dumb, ugly shit. Moving on. Uh, uh, Ryback's thoughts on Moro, Ronaldo, Corey Graves' situation. Um, the whole depression thing. Wow, what a hypocrite Ryback is. Dude, is the biggest snowflake ever. I watch Russell talk. Well, that's something to be proud of. And Ryback got pissed and even posted pics of a guy and asked people to attack him online because he wrote in an article that Ryback wasn't a good wrestler, which is 100% true. Grow a pair, big man, before acting tough because you're not tough at all. Um, thank you very much, buddy. This is a really hurt person, obviously. And I don't even... The fact that he watches Russell talk is... That's all I need to know. People like this, and you guys deal with it, they are... Um, they'll get mad that somebody will write a really negative um, piece that can hurt your brand, that, that they, they solely do it for money, with no facts and... And a guy like this who's, who has no idea what a good wrestler even is. And um, and they think that, like, that's not, like, what he just wrote isn't even true. And I, I, I asked people to attack him online. No, I probably posted back, while back, on this particular thing was, I put the article in the guy that wrote it and put his, his account on there. And if my fans want to give their opinion, just like this guy wants to give his, his opinion on me... I will let my fans give their opinion on him. And that's, but the people like this get really upset at that. He's, How dare you not take what he said as gospel? Well, it's because he's fucking a fucking idiot doing shit for money, buddy. That it's like the guy's not, man, I tell you, anybody that writes about other people like that, they, they, they're like, that's just my opinion. Like if your job in life is to write about other people, like you didn't do something right. And at the end of the day, and that's why you get the negative shit with people that write about negative things is because they're so unhappy with themselves that they have to try to justify their own unhappiness by writing negative things about other people. That's like the Dave Melters. They're so internally unhappy and unsatisfied with their own ability to fucking go after life that they have to try to fucking knock other people that do to make themselves feel better. Guys, psychology wise, it's 100% truth. There's not, there's, it's not anything else. And then they do shit for money and they do a bunch of fucked up stuff for it. And they have no problem hurting other people and, and trying to persuade other people's opinions for the negative on it. But I wish you the best, buddy. Is there anybody that, any, anybody that has anything negative to say to me, I, I, I truly wish you the best. Especially those that have, feel the need to actually say it. Like it's, you know, I see some people online and some people that are very extremely wealthy, like well off people. And I don't like, I, I just don't vibe with them. I don't like stop and like let them know that on their page. Like, man, you're a fucking fraud, fake ass motherfucker. Fuck you. Like, I just don't follow them. I just don't like, I just don't. And it's fine. And I don't, you know what I mean? Like the fact that you think it's okay to like stop. It's like, you're only hurting yourself by, by putting that energy out there like that. So. I'm trying to help you guys and get you guys to the next level, but if you don't, you, only you can help yourself at the end of the day. Final one. <laughs> this is a good one to end on. Viking Tees writes, um, you're still dangerous and suck at wrestling. Big for nothing, Roid Rager. So, <sighs> poor me. Drink my, my sorrows. My tits got bigger. My tits have got bigger. I can't, I got the camera a little different angle. I'm over 300 pounds now. I've been putting out a lot of workout videos. 
I'm very lean. I wish that guy the best. It's just that's kind of humorous, so we're not going to get upset at that. Guys, though, that was uh, another episode of Winding with the Ryback. I've, uh, I'm going to be doing another stem cell procedure here in Vegas. Uh, we just went to the doctor the other day. The guy that I've had the first 11 with, I'm not going down to Columbia on this one. And uh, to give me a little extra healing for the next uh, four to six months. Uh, and I'm working. We got one of the, my, my right lat has been developed now. And I'll continue to do the rehab for that. I got another area that connects into my tricep that is giving me issues. And uh, we're really, really trying to get figured out. Um, I'm very lucky. And I'm uh, very blessed to have uh, got myself to this point. And uh, I'm very selfish at this point. Because, and I don't expect everyone to understand, uh, but wrestling-wise, like WWE, like they're not there for you. And why would they be? They're not there for anybody. And um, so I've gotten my health back, my back. My back is great. And, and I need to get my shoulder and I got to figure out a couple things. And uh, at the end of the day, I have to accept all accountability and responsibility for my situation because I'm the one in that situation. It doesn't matter how you got there. I could blame WWE all day long for things on that. It, it's not going to fix my situation. And, um, and that's why I, I spend all the money that I do um, with my ankle rehab every week, trying to get my nerves firing in my leg and, and, and doing the, the rehab exercises for my back and shoulder and spending, you know, all the money on the, on the stem cell procedures and trying to get my health guys and, and building a business and a podcast and my investments um, so that I could wrestle because I love wrestling. But guys, I don't believe in wrestling full time. It's not, I look at it like fighting and I've told you guys this. You can't let these promoters, like promoters are not good people. Just so you guys understand Promoters are, are horrible human beings in all fields. They, they whore out human beings and they use success and, 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 and fame and money to lure people in. And when you get smart enough and you increase your knowledge and you realize that like, hey, that's a really fucked up thing. And most people that like end up doing it end up really, really fucked up. And even the people that do well end up really fucked up and... You know, whether it's fighting and they pit you against each other and you fuck up your brain for the rest of your life. And um, when you can learn to make money with your brain, it's a very powerful thing. And I've, I've been on a quest for some time, uh, but I love professional wrestling. I love being physical. Uh, I just don't think it needs to be done every week. I think wrestling and, and the, the way to... to the promoters are just trying to make as much money as possible. And I, it's, I want you guys to understand this. But when you can make money on your own and you don't have to be reliant on them on the schedule and you could create a life and happiness outside of that, you could then, and you could create enough popularity outside of that. And maybe this will give you guys a little insight of what I'm doing. You could then go back and do that when you want. And not kill yourself. And maybe it's only two or three times a year. But it's special. And I promise you. You want to feel those special moments. And it's not meant to be done weekly. But everybody else is playing the game. Of making the promoter as much money. And sacrificing their health. For a little bit of wealth. Where I realized very early in. What the game was. And I'm, I'm on a quest. To, to know and understand. And learn as much as I can to give myself enough power um, to do what I love inside the ring. And that's the only part of wrestling that I like is inside the ring and the adrenaline, the energy, and in the crowd interaction, guys. That's the only thing I like about professional wrestling. The rest I don't like. I hate professional wrestling outside of that. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to feel on my own, my own accord or my own schedule. So um, I'll be very patient with that. And I'll get my health back to a point that I know I'm going to be okay. And I'm not going to do something. And my back is fine now. But my shoulder, I need a little more work. And uh, we're going to get there. Guys, we're going to get there. And uh, there's a method to my madness. There always is. With that, guys. 
Please subscribe, turn on notifications, check out my podcast conversation with the big guy Ryback, available on all podcast platforms. You can subscribe on iTunes and leave a review if possible. Subscribe anywhere, but leave a review on iTunes. That's where they uh, take uh, reviews. And my, my supplement line, Feed Me More Nutrition, which has now gone to fulfillment. And um, three years of hard work has paid off. So thank you guys very much. And we have a lot more work to do. But uh, I'm looking forward to what 2020 brings. And it's a day in, day out battle of just continuously, you know, getting hungry, staying hungry, and uh, getting myself ready so that I can, I can once again, on my terms, look up make eye contact with the entire world and the energy that only I possess will be felt once again because there is not an energy on this motherfucking planet like mine when turned on fully there's not a hunger like mine turned on all the way when obsessed you will feel it you'll get goosebumps and you will feel it you will understand it. Most importantly, you will feel it. Feed me more! guys very much for watching Ryback TV. If you can smash that subscribe, hit that like button, share this channel, and for Feed Me More Nutrition on feedmemore.com, save 10% with Podcast 10, click here for my podcast conversation with the big guy Ryback, available on all podcast platforms. Click here. And for more videos of yours truly on Ryback TV, click here. Feed me more.